the topic. A proverb is a short saying that reveals and equips God's people with three things. Now, a proverb will reveal and equip us with a number of things, but for the sake of how the Holy Spirit led me, I want to give us three things that a proverb reveals and equips. Are you ready? Number one, a proverb will reveal truth. Truth about a number of topics. And truth is important, young people, because truth is what sanctifies us. Truth is what will clean us. And we need the truth. And if we continue in the truth, the Bible says that the truth will make us, make us free. So the truth can also deliver us. And how many, when you look in your life, you can be honest and say, I need some deliverance. Deliverance is just not for the sinner. God's people need to be delivered. Secondly, a proverb will reveal and equip us with instruction. A proverb will reveal and equip us with instruction. We need instruction or proper instruction, direction or guidance for life. And so when you want to sit down and read the scripture, you should start in the gospels, read Psalms, and also dabble in the Proverbs because it's gonna give you in instruction. And it's nothing like having a proverb explained orally to you because it will reveal instruction for your life. How many know we should live by the written and the revealed word of God? Now, get this. I wrote the scripture up here. When it comes to instruction, it's very important for young people and young adults to have instruction because the Bible says that fools die for a lack of destruction instruction so I don't want to be a person that's without it because I can die before my time am I right about it a fool hates instruction you you don't need to be the type of young woman or young man that when someone is giving you instruction you in your feelings or in yourself no you need to welcome instruction because it will help you and finally, a proverb will reveal and equip wisdom. Wisdom. Proverbs 4 and 7 lets us know, young people, money is not the principal thing. Sex is not the principal thing. No, the Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. I need to have wisdom so I can make the proper choices. I need to have wisdom so I have discretion in life. A wise young person just doesn't go along with the crowd. You have knowledge and understanding and then you make the proper choices. And get this, the Bible teaches wisdom cries aloud. Wisdom is constantly coming forth. My question is, are you receiving it? So what does a proverb reveal and equip us with? Number one, truth. Number two, instruction. And number three, wisdom. And we're gonna get that today. Specifically, we're gonna get it for the righteous. Because that's what this proverb is primarily about. It's about the righteous. The Lord wants to make sure that righteous people have truth, come on, have instruction and have wisdom. So we need to clarify briefly who's righteous. A righteous person is someone that lives by faith. We consider a righteous person to be just, right? 
And the Bible says clearly that the just lives by faith. Well, where do we get faith from, Pastor? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you're sleepy and you're righteous, you got to shake sleep off because faith is coming forth and that's what you need in order to live. If you focus on something else, you got to readjust your focus because faith is coming forth and that's what the righteous live by. Righteous folk have given their life to Jesus after they have repented and made them made him Lord and Savior and they're basically hungering and thirsting for his righteousness. Give me what I need, Lord, so I can live. Do I have anybody like that in here on this morning? You're righteous and you want everything that God has for you. A righteous person not only lives by faith, but I got to pause and say this. A righteous person has to fight the flesh. Just because you come to church, just because you know some Bible verses, and just because you sing unto the Lord, that don't mean you don't have to fight your flesh. Everyone in here that is righteous has a daily battle with themselves. Demons don't mess with us every day, but we live with this flesh. And, and this flesh fights us every day. So much so, Jesus said, if anybody is going to follow him, follow me, let them first take up the cross or deny themselves, take up the cross and then come on and what? Follow me. Yeah, you and I, we got to deny our self. We got to put our flesh under subjection. And y'all sitting there staring at me like your flesh don't cut up from time to time. But you can't fool me. I know your flesh cut up from time to time. Sometimes you want to say something to somebody that a righteous person should not say. Sometimes you want to touch something, rub on something that a righteous person should not touch or rub on. Look how y'all looking. Look at somebody say, I got to fight this flesh. Yeah, sometimes your flesh want to go to the left, but the spirit wants you to go to the right. So you got to make your flesh do what God said do. And it's a daily battle. I said it's a daily battle. I got to stay in prayer so this flesh don't win. I got to fast more than just on Tuesday so this flesh don't win. I, I got to have some, some Bible verses bookmarked in my app. So when this flesh get to cutting up, I can go right to that bookmark and put the word on this flesh. If you know what I'm talking about, say my flesh cut up too. Yeah. And so again, this is for the righteous. He's going to help us by giving us some faith and going to give us something that's going to help us to fight this, this flesh. Are you still with me? Let's go a little bit further as we look at the verse because it reveals two traits about the righteous. We know what it means to be righteous, right? Now we're going to lock in on this verse and see the wisdom, the truth, and the instructions that the righteous need to be equipped with. Proverbs 11 and 30 says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. The first truth we need to understand about being righteous is that the righteous should have fruit. As a righteous young man or young woman, you need to be bearing fruit that is consistent with being a righteous person. The Bible says that a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. So if you are righteous, God is expecting you to bear fruit that is equivalent with being a righteous person. He's expecting me to bear 
fruit. And so now we got to figure out what is this fruit? I'm righteous. I should bear some some fruit. Let's go to Hebrews. Y'all still with me? All right. Now y'all going to be with me even if I step on your toes. All right. We're going to find out. Hebrews 13. And notice 15. The righteous should have some what? Fruit. So what is fruit? Hebrew 13, 15 will tell us or define it. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. According to this verse, fruit is when I offer continual praise. Yeah. Part of being righteous is giving God some fruit from my lips. If I am truly blood washed, if I am truly born again, if I truly say out of my mouth, I love the Lord, then there should be some fruit coming out of my life. And according to this verse, MSW, fruit is a continual praise. Oh, there should never be a time where the young people that are righteous have dried up. There should always be some juicy fruit in the house. There should always be some fresh fruit in the house. There needs to be somebody that don't mind shouting hallelujah. There needs to be somebody that don't mind putting them hands together. That's if you are righteous. And I love how the Hebrew writer said it need to be continual. That means whether I'm in the church or outside the church, I'm still bearing some fruit I'm still going to give God some praise and that's what some of us been slipping at because your praise is sometime it's time for you to have a con continual praise I'm talking about whether the praise team is rocking the house or whether they are not do you have a con continual praise can you give God the glory when everything is going bad in your life can you give God the glory when there's pain in your body can you give God the glory when you're expecting and facing disappointment look at somebody and say there's got to be a continual praise and sometimes I question the youth and young adults at the MSW because I don't always see a continual praise and I'm wondering where's the fruit I said I'm wondering where's the fruit look at somebody and say where's the fruit yeah if you got some fruit or praise on the inside of you ain't no shyness up in the house ain't no timidness ain't no scare let me unbutton my jacket and say somebody needs to give God the praise look at the text then he calls it a sacrifice sometimes you ain't gonna feel like it sometimes you ain't gonna want to but God been so good I got to I remember that I owe him I remember how he died for me I can't stay seated in my chair I can't sit there scratching my head I can't sit there acting like what is going on I am unfamiliar with I gotta give it up to him I owe him I owe him and sacrifice of praise I'm looking at some folk that looking mighty dry but y'all need to put some lotion on your elbows and help me give God the if you righteous you should give God the and I can go further because the Bible says even if you ain't righteous let everything that have breath do what praise the Lord God is looking for a continual continual pray that's fruit and it needs to be coming out your out your mouth I said it needs to be coming out your your mouth. Am I right about it? Matthew. Matthew. Now y'all said y'all gonna get with me. Even if I stepped on your toes. 
Hope we ain't got a liar in the house. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, 23. So fruit is a continual what? Offering of praise. praise. And that's what your God should see from you. Matthew 13, 23. But he who receives seed on the ground or on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some hundred fold, some sixty and some thirty. According to this verse, young people, fruit is proof fruit is proof that you have been receiving the word see it's one thing to come to church week in and week out but it's another thing to hear the word get an understanding and put it in action what's gonna happen pastor that seed of the word will have fallen on good ground and it's going to bear some fruit. It's going to be some evidence that you are receiving the word. That means, young folk, your life can't stay the same. You're going to bear some fruit. If you are a person that curses and you receive the word on not allowing corrupt communication out your, out your mouth, you shouldn't be cursing much longer. No, because you in Christ and everything that's in Christ is new. So how you talk should be new if you are receiving the word. You come in here and you save and you hear that you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You ain't going to leave here without having no power. No, you done heard the word. And if it fell on good ground, it's going to be some proof. Tell somebody your fruit is your proof yeah see we can say a lot of things out of our mouth but what we do is the proof the choices you make is the proof if you've been listening to your parents the the choices that you make is the proof if you've been receiving from your your past tell somebody your fruit is proof jesus said man these folk they they honor me with their mouth but, but I ain't seeing no proof I ain't seeing no fruit because their heart is far from me Saul came to the prophet telling him he had followed his instruction he had been putting the word into action but Samuel said to Saul hey if you did what I said why do I hear these sheep still making noise you lying I got proof you ain't been putting the word into action and so from this day forward, my proof that I love the Lord is me obeying him. I'm going to bear some, some fruit. How many are understanding? Yeah. The righteous. They have to make sure that they are bearing fruit. The righteous. Their life is, 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 is like a tree, he says, of, of life. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. When people look at your life, they should see that your life is fruitful. They, they should see that you're striving to do the will of God. As you start this new semester, you got to make sure you bear fruit. You got to make sure you're not getting caught up. You got to remember who you are. You got to bear some, some fruit. You go to, to college for the first time, you be, you're going to be getting flyers every day for a new party. Everybody going to be talking about everybody's going now. But if you righteous, you got to bear some fruit. Woo, now y'all looking at me funny. This is the best seat in the house, I'm telling you. You have to bear some fruit. When you go back to school and folk don't see that your body done changed from last year and you're, you don't look the same, you can't get caught up. You got to remember who you are. 
I'm righteous. I'm righteous. And I look good. Look at somebody say, I'm righteous. And I look good. Yeah, you got to know who you who you are. And too many times some of our young people get caught up because they forget that they are righteous and their life should be like a tree. People should see fruit in your life. How many are understanding? Yeah. You, you can't be so immature or childish to where you just want to be accepted by everybody. You got to remember because you're righteous, your life is just going to be different. It's just going to be different in a good way. And sometimes folk will try to intimidate you to be like them, but you should be to the point to where they want to be like, like you. And so he set the record straight. Remember, you're righteous. And the righteous or the fruit of the righteous is a tree of, of life. When people come talk to you, they getting good fruit from you. When, when people come and ask for your advice, they ain't gonna get no bad advice. No, your, your life is fruitful. You, you just gonna give them something that can help them. And some of us got folk like that. People come to you for advice. What do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? You don't get on their level, girl. If you're me, I try. No. Give them some good fruit. Give them something that can cause them to be better. Because they may not come to a place of refuge. They may not go to anybody's church, but they need some fruit. They need something that can help them to be better and so then he says what the righteous should do we should be wise and win souls the righteous should win souls is the second trait and he who wins souls is is wise see a righteous person needs to be a winner and of course, we know to win in one sense means to prevail. But that's not what he's talking about. Or that's not one of the things that he's talking about. A righteous person should be someone that is able to influence others. That's you. You should be able to convince folk that there's nothing wrong with you. It's something wrong with them if they're still in sin. You should be able to convince that. But how many of us in here, sometimes we let folk convince us out of our salvation to go and participate in sin? No, you need to win them. You need to be persuasive. You need to be the one that is comfortable shining light in a dark place. And not be the one that's embarrassed to turn the light on in a dark place. You, you righteous man, you righteous young woman. You need to have the confidence and feel good about not being a freak. Instead of letting your sexually active friends who are a little freaky make you feel bad for not being like them. And I know it get a little freaky sometime in school. So y'all can sit there and look at me like that all you want, but you can't fool me. <laughs> you can't fool me. You gotta be wise. He who wins souls is wise. On your job, you gotta be wise. Intelligent, clever, witty, discerning. You got to have a mindset. When I go to work, when I go to school, when I hang around my teammates, oftentimes they're going to be thinking about one or two things. And so you already have to be armed so you don't enter into temptation. 
you can win them instead of them winning winning you you need to know how to flip it when they talk about oh no nah, he go to church don't talk about that you need to know how to flip it that's right I go to church and that mean I'm living right and I'm striving to live in right and if I die I ain't going to hell where you going you got to know how to flip it because folk would try to intimidate you he who wins souls is wise when you getting dressed in the morning you know you looking good your mindset got to be all right i got to know how to deal with folk that compliment me and folk that hate on me lord give me something to say because i might bump into one of them or both of them you got to win folk because you'd be surprised about the things that people remember about you based upon how you respond and how you carry yourself Sometimes the very people you work with and go to school, they'll just watch you and won't say nothing. And months or years may pass by and they bump into you and they'll talk about what they remember about you. You won them. You influenced them. But what does that say if you're telling folk you Christian, but you act just like everybody else? You got to win, folk. You got to have a winning mindset. Lord, is somebody in my class I can win to you? Is somebody I can plant a seed in? I may not win them all, but I can affect somebody's life for the better. Is somebody. You think God put you in that school, that university, on that team just to be there? No. He going to use you but you gotta have a winning mindset even when you mess up and people see it they need to see you getting up and doing better cause you gonna mess up and some folk may say stupid stuff like I thought you would say but you need to live in such a way to where when you mess up you just say hey look man say folk ain't perfect a righteous man fall but they get right back right back up no one is above Tim temptation I messed up but I'm trying to get it right you got to have a winning mindset and this year God gonna be winning some folk through your life God gonna use you to lead somebody to Christ God will lead or use you to get somebody to come to church God use you in some miraculous ways but we first got to have the right mindset so I want to give us some wisdom in my clothes how to have a winning mindset some wisdom to win souls and it's real simple you ain't got to know 50 verses no you, you ain't got to know the verse you, you ain't got to know the character sometimes it helps and it's good if you do but you ain't got to you just need some, some wisdom. See, the day of the quiet Christian, the quiet young Christian, the, the, the bashful and timid young Christian, that's outdated. It's time to upgrade. Look at somebody say, you got to upgrade. <laughs> that's it. So let's look at some wisdom to win souls. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3. 2 Corinthians 3. And this will help in the church and outside the church, even on your job. 2 Corinthians 3 and 3. Paul writes, clearly, you are an epistle or a letter of Christ. You are ministered by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living God not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart you know what he's saying look you are living proof that Jesus is real you're living proof that Christ is real you are you are living proof that the anointing can destroy yokes so just be conscious 
of your lifestyle. You are living proof. Down to the music you listen to. It speaks about who you believe in. God bless you with a car. And then some of your friends get in the car and you telling them you say, but you listen to ungodly music that does not promote what the Bible teaches. You got to remember, you're the proof because they need to ask you, why you don't listen to such and such? That's your opportunity. Hey man, pop this in or, or listen to it. Hold up. What is it? That's your opportunity right now. That's your opportunity right there to be living proof. When they passing out flyers and before you take it and say thank you, you look at it, nah, I'm good. Why, man? It's gonna be, it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be all of that. Nah, man. That's your that's your door. Be living proof. Man, I'm saved. I don't go to stuff like that. Boom! And then walk off. Or continue. <laughs> The conversation. Just be living, be living proof. Man, you killing that outfit. Man, look at that fit right there. Man, golly, where you get that at? That's your door. Man, you know what? Man, God bless me with this. Boom. You living proof. You ain't got to be Shonda. No, you ain't got to do all that. Just be your, be yourself. Don't scare folk. Don't scare folk. Just be living proof. Hey man, Tuesday night, we going such and such. You wanna go hang out with us? Tuesday, what time? Man, about around about seven o'clock. You know what? If, if I can be there at eight, I got I gotta be at church at seven. Boom, that's your door. I come with y'all when I'm when I'm done. Cause I mean no, everything folk invite you to, it ain't seeing. It ain't nothing wrong, but but if something is going on that pertains to God, keep God, keep God first. Just be living, just be living proof. Did Christ change your life? I said, did Christ change your life? Then just be living proof. You are the proof. That's what he's basically saying in this verse. When you go to football practice, just be yourself and when the door of opportunity is open you let folk know what it is just be proof man I don't never hear you cuss why you don't cuss that's your door right there that's your door that's your door that's your door don't don't shrug it out no let them know and just, man I used to you know what I tell folk and, and it sparks a conversation. Oh, well, why you don't do such and such? I was like, man, back in my heathen days, <laughs> back in the day, I, I used to, but I don't no more. You let folk know, you, you, you can live this life. Am I right about it? All right, let's go to Daniel 3. Daniel 3. See, there's no way that you can hide a light. If you're righteous, why would you want to hide that? You got something that can help the city. You don't hide a light under a basket. No, you let the light do what? You let it shine. You let it shine. Don't hide what God put in you. Just be living proof. Man, why are you always happy? Boom, there go your door. You know why I'm always happy? Jesus changed my, my life. You know, I had a good day at church and I'm just thinking about what was said and done. That makes me happy. Daniel 3. Now, many of us know the story of what we call the Hebrew boys. The king wanted them to worship a golden image, right? Notice verse 16 and 17. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Now, it's getting a little tight in this conversation because the king was trying to make them do something they didn't want to do. 
And notice they said, look, we have no need to answer you in this matter. In other words, they were saying, I ain't arguing with you. We are not going to what? Argue. And there are some things, young people, at school and on your job, folk will bring to you just to start an argument. You got to let for look, I ain't arguing with you about this. I know what the Bible say. I'm not going there with you. I'm not going back and forth. God's word is settled. And notice what he says, they say in verse 17. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand. Now they're getting personal. Your hand, O king. But here it is. But if not, let it be known to who? Man, y'all didn't read that right. Let it be known to you, O king, called his name out that we do not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up if you're going to have a winning mind sometimes you got to make it plain you got to make it plain they said you O king what you set up and we not going to argue with you sometimes you got to make it plain with your teammates classmates and other folk in your life you gotta make it make it look I'm not going to the club with you look I am not sending you no picture of my body no I am not smoking with you I did it last time but I done repented and I got it right I'm not doing it with you you gotta make it plain these boys weren't laughing but you know what some, some young people that are in God do? They, they laugh and smirk when it's time to be serious. Girl, you cute, girl. If I had a woman like you, <laughs> stop. You, you know what I'm saying? No, no, that ain't no time to be laughing. No, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't going there with you. I know your reputation, and I ain't fooling with you. God bless you, and, and keep it moving. You got to make it, make it plain. I'm sorry, young people. In life, you just got to make it, make it plain. You, you can't be worried about, I might hurt their feelings. They may need their feelings hurt. And sometimes you have to be di direct. Look, if you're going to hang with me, I'm not going to do this. You got to let folk know. Look, we going to the mall, Chick-fil-A, and then home. Say it with me. We're going to the mall, Chick-fil-A, and home. Because see, some folk will try to get you to take them somewhere. And then while you out and about, hey, since we out, run me by. No, nah, ain't no running by. And they'll try to sweeten it. i give you some gas money if you just, no, no. I don't want my name and no foolishness. I'm saved. Because the way the law is set up, if something go down, and one of us go down, <laughs> we all go down. You gotta make it play. You got a car with your parents' name on it, your parents' name on the insurance, you got friends that smoke and get high, you gotta make it play. Hey man, you holding? Now before you get in this car, I, I need to know, I drop you up, but you holding? Because if they get in your car and you get pulled over, they're going to be asking, who car is this? And everybody's name on the insurance is going to be held responsible. You don't want to bring your parents in on some bad choices that you done made. You got to make it plain. You have to be responsible. Look how y'all looking at me. Everybody can't hold your hand. You got to learn how to make it, make it plain. You gotta make it plain. When that boy looking at you, wetting his lips, and looking at you and rubbing his hand, so make it plain. I'm, I'm done, I'm good. Stanking ho, well, I'll just be that. But I ain't getting involved with somebody like, boy, this too raw for y'all. You gotta have a winning mind. 
girl, let me come in. I'll be gone before she get back. Just let me, just let me come in for a little while. We ain't, we ain't gonna do nothing. I respect you. Well, make it plain. Well, if you respect me, do what I'm asking. Make it plain. If you look at what I'm saying, there's no easy way around it. You're going to be in positions in life. You just got to tell somebody what it is. Am I right about it? Ain't no time for no games. Just make it, make it plain. Is this too plain for some of y'all? Even in the church, you got to make it plain with your brothers and sisters. Because sometimes what I found out in church settings, young people know about each other dirt, each other past. You know about certain people's reputation that certain parents may not know about or the preacher. And so even sometimes when you deal with your brothers and sisters in the church, you got to make it, make it plain. I love you, but I ain't going there with you. Now look at how y'all look. Make it, make it plain. I'm going to tell the pastor. I'm going to tell minister so-and-so. I done told you about this, it's time for me to act, expose it. Make it, make it plain. That's a winning mind. Because your mindset is, man, I don't want the church looking bad. I, I don't want such and such looking bad. You snitch, call it what you want. But sometimes you gotta expose, the Bible says, the works or fruits of darkness. Gotta have a winning mind. Last verse. Because I ain't getting too much help. It's one of the messages. Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself. This is Joshua talking to his kinfolk. If it seem evil to you, you choose. This day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we'll serve who? The Lord. Look at that one in mind. He stood on his principles. And I love the way he said it. If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, then don't serve. If it seem evil, sometimes you got to tell your girlfriends, for me to be a virgin, then you don't have to be that. You go do what you want to do. If it seem evil for you, for me not to smoke with you, that's evil. Look, you make your choice. You go, you do what you want to do you stand on your principles if it seemed evil for you for me to go to church look I know that's where I need to be I'm going to God's house you can go serve other gods if you want to young people stand on your principles stand on your principles and sometimes when you stand on your principles, other people will have a problem with it. But let that be their problem. Let that be their problem. When I got saved and I was on a college setting, folk in my dormitory started calling me different names. And I didn't even know most of them. But word got back to me. They were calling me just different names and so forth. But I didn't make that my problem. That was their problem. As for me, I'm going to do what's best for, for me. And see, when you have a winning mindset, no matter what other people are trying to persuade you to do, you stand on your principles. You stand on your principles 
because that is going to be a testament to your God and to somebody, somebody else. Somebody needs to see you standing up for what's right. And somebody is watching whether you know it or not. So you, you have a winning mindset. You stand on your principles. Because I'm going to tell you what the Bible say. One sinner, the Bible says, one sinner can destroy much good. All it takes is just one time to do some dumb stuff. To change the path of your life. Just be a witness. Go ahead and suffer the persecution. Folk going to talk about you, look at you funny, but it's only going to be temporary. You have a winning mindset. Let them know it's somebody at this school that's trying to live right. Not flawless or perfect, but I'm striving to live right. It's somebody on this team that don't do like everybody else. It's a trendsetter here. You got to have that winning mindset and be proud. Hold your head up and your shoulders back and walk around knowing that God is with you and you're making an impact. I said, God is with you and you're making an impact. People will see you and they'll ask you, you still go to such and such church? Or some people, when they get in trouble, they'll ask you, can you pray for me and such and such? i never forget when, when my son was in the hospital and uh, his heart had stopped. My mindset was, Lord, you in control, but... I'm a Christian and I can't respond like someone who's not in God. Y'all with me? And so we go down there and my son got all these tubes and so forth coming out of him and the anesthesia is affecting him and he acting all this, that, and the other. And I'm just standing there. I'm just standing there. My wife, she made it there and she's standing there. And then there was this woman, one of the nurses, she was there and she had some type of tablet. And all this was going on for about 5, 10, 15 minutes. And I didn't say not one word. I'm just praying and watching and sometimes laughing and just dealing with the situation. This woman, she just leaned over and she was talking to my wife, but it was loud enough where I could hear. She didn't ask what's your name. She didn't ask what was going on. She just leaned over and she just said, what church do y'all go to? That was the question that came out of her mouth. She recognized that it was something different about this family. You remember that? She just lived, what church do y'all go to? Planted a seed. Didn't speak to her after, afterwards. My wife did. You don't know where her life ended up, but you just have a winning attitude. Wherever I go, I can plant a seed to give my God glory so somebody else can see him through my life. And that's a winning attitude, young folk. That's a winning attitude. Whether you're on the job or in the school, you, you just had a mindset, okay, I got to carry myself in such a way where I can point somebody to Jesus. Somebody can see Jesus in my life. Because I'm going to tell you what's embarrassing. You know what's really embarrassing? When you cut up out in public, and people know you as somebody who cuts up and then they come to your church one day and they sitting there like they go to this church <laughs> now to me that's em that's embarrassing you don't you don't want it to be like that you you just want to win folk to Christ by being the best example that you can be telling people like it is making it plain and just standing on your on your principles how many understand and i'm challenging you this year as you go back to school work and so forth have a winning a winning mind y'all got it i'm done let's give god a hand clap for the lesson and the service